Criteria 3. Surface sociability, but apparent lack of sense of self, pride or shame. On the surface, children appear to be normally sociable. They clearly have sufficient empathy to manipulate others, but they can be ambiguous, switching between moods or displaying conflicting emotional responses at the same time. This readiness to switch can raise questions about the depth or sincerity of anything that is said or done. In many ways, children are rigid, particularly with other children. They need to take a lead role and things must be done their way. Typically, there is little room for any negotiation with their peers. To observers, it would appear that they do not realise that they are children themselves, taking charge of all in a very adult way. Despite this, children are often highly sociable, seeking friendships and wishing to be liked and admired, but will frequently shock their peers by a complete lack of boundaries. Despite their social awareness, they can be oblivious to what is fitting for their age, unaware of any responsibility and display over-the-top behaviour uninhibited by their company or environment. For example, by showing unprovoked aggression, inappropriate laughter or screaming in class on a train or in a supermarket, apparently untouched by the impact that they may have on those around them. This can be true at any time, but it is particularly the case when they're being demand avoidant, when any reserve or shyness totally evaporates. Whilst children prefer the company of adults, they seldom recognise their authority or status, seeing themselves very much as equals rather than junior partners. To outsiders, the children may appear to be very naughty, but parents see their children as confused and recognise that they cannot help much of their behaviour. All parents will report that no amount of praise, reproof, punishment, sanctions or rewards have any lasting effect and are largely ineffective. Traditional behavioural approaches largely meet with failure. Criteria 4. Ability of mood impulsive and led by the need to control. Moods can switch in an instant and for no apparent reason. Changes are dramatic, switching from one emotional extreme to another. One moment a child may be very affectionate and cuddly, but suddenly switch to anger and thumping. Sometimes conflicting emotions are displayed simultaneously. A child may be clutching your hand tightly, at the same time is telling you how much they hate you. This ambiguity is common, and it is often hard to make a judgement of the real mood that a child is in. Mood changes may be a response to perceived pressures with a child going over the top in an exaggerated protest, fear or even affection. Indeed, the behaviour is so dramatic it can appear to be an act rather than a genuine response or reaction. Children are very impetuous, driven by irresistible urges to follow impulses. Activities must be carried out on the child terms and they will stick rigidly to their ideas and plans, allowing little room for negotiation, although ideas and activities can be abandoned or changed if they suspect someone else is muscling in or exerting control. When children have misbehaved or have been corrected, they may apologise and even show remorse, but then re-offend at once. Rule-based systems for handling and behaviour tend to be ineffective. Parents and teachers need a wide range of strategies and find that variety, novelty and indirect approaches help. Criteria 5. Comfortable in role play and pretending. Some appear to lose touch with reality, either living in a world of fantasy or blurring the boundaries between fact and fiction. They may take on second-hand roles as a convenient way of being or coping with certain demands or situations. Many will adopt the role of teacher with other children, mimicking, adapting and extending their style to suit them, their mood or exploit a role to control events or other people. Many children will have a repertoire of many different roles, not just characters they act out, but ones that are unique alternative personalities. This collection of characters may include parent, teacher, big sister, baby, good child and carer to name a few. Often roles are ado adopted so fully and completely that parents can be confused as to who their child really is. The role of good child can be useful in school of course, but it can mask and divert attention away from the underachievement that most will experience. The good child mode helps them keep a low profile and avoid demands. For example, a child may pretend to be reading diligently but actually be taking nothing in. 
Nearly all children would enjoy highly imaginative play, both on their own and in shared pretending with others. Typically, they enjoy a play with toys, dolls and teddies, but also like animals and domestic games. Criteria 6. Language delay seems a result of passivity. They can be late starting to talk and behind with early vocabulary, but often catch up well and suddenly. Pragmatics, or how language is used and altered by social context, is generally not disordered. Generally, eye contact is good and mostly appropriate, and social timing is fair, although it can be disrupted by demand avoidance. Facial expressions are generally normal, but can be over vivacious and exaggerated. Speech content can be odd or even bizarre, but possibly this is not fully noticed by parents who become used to it. Social mimicry is more common than video mimicry. In other words, they are likely to copy the social style and attitudes of those around them rather than the exact copying of individual actions. However, some will show brief echoing of what they have just heard, and many have a talent for impersonation. They use repetitive and relentless questioning as a distraction technique, and this can be a signal of panic and heightened anxiety. Criteria 7. Obsessive behaviour. Much of the behaviour described is carried out in an obsessive way, especially demand avoidance. As a result, most children will show a low level of achievement in school, partly due to the fact that their motivation to resist demands is so sustained, but also that the child knows no boundaries to their avoidance strategies. For most of the time, it would appear that the child is willing to expend more energy and effort avoiding the demand than they would have exerted meeting that demand. Other obsessions tend to be social and relate to people and their characteristics. They could show an excessive dislike for an individual that, and may possibly harass them or obsessively blame them. Alternatively, they may develop an overpowering liking for certain people and this can lead to problems. Children can become reliant on one friendship or dependent on a particular member of staff. This can lead to difficulties when children make transitions to new classes or if staff or close friends leave school or move away. Criteria 8. Neurological involvement. Soft neurological signs are seen in the form of clumsiness and physical awkwardness. This need not be too conspicuous, but may just be a heavy-handedness or being generally accident prone. As previously mentioned, crawling is late or absent in more than half of the children. Some children may have absences, fits or episodic discontrol, although there is insufficient hard evidence for this as yet. Many parents report sensory issues and these commonly rate, relate to tactile problems with clothing. So who can provide a diagnosis? A diagnosis can be provided by a number of professionals. In the UK the first port of call for many will be a referral to CAMS, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service or to a paediatrician. Assessment may also be made by the Elizabeth Newson Centre or the Lorna Wing Institute. In theory, any professional trained in using the latest version of DISCO, the Diagnostic Interview for Social and Communication Disorders, would be able to identify a PDA, and for many parents, a privately funded assessment provides quicker answers than working with state-funded professionals. A PDA diagnosis is not the be-all and end-all. Certain professionals and agencies may provide a diagnosis of atypical autism or just identify an autistic spectrum disorder or ASD. This need not be a problem provided a good support package is put in place. However, recognition of PDA is helpful as it should ensure that the proposed support and approaches are correct. Whilst there is much in general ASD thinking that is good for PDA, there is a lot that is counterproductive or inappropriate. PDA affects as many girls as boys, and early intervention will improve the outcome for any child.